Welcome to the News from Underground segment, which your fellow hosts are going to talk about everything and everything about freedom. And of course, we have a question answer response we're going to provide at the end of the show. We're first going to cover two stories, but before that, let's get to some announcements. Uh, first announcement will be the next Freedom Gathering. It's going to be in January, the 9th of January next month. Next year, right? <laughs> uh, on Saturday, it'll be hosted here at the Satoshi Anarchy Garden. Our fellow ANCAP will be presenting would be Johnny, Johnny Richmond, the guy who did that awesome outro at the end of this video that does the remix with Alan Garden. Uh, he's going to do a talk on the Monopoly and Rose, the transportation system. The, uh, you know, highway deaths are cause over 38,000 people to die. And he has, a, he's done a lot of work uh, closely related to that, and I guess in understanding urban development and of course the roads come much into play with that. So he's going to do a talk and presentation here at the Satoshi Anarchy Garden on the 9th of January. And so yeah, come join us at our next uh, Freedom Gathering if you can. You know, mark it on your calendar. The next, uh, so first story of today will be <clears throat> Mark Zuckerberg, a $100 million donation to Newark Public Schools failed miserably. In 2010, Mark Zuckerberg donated $100 million to Newark, New Jersey's failing public school system with the intention of turning around their schools in five years. The goals Zuckerberg set out to achieve to enact a number of reforms that will make Newark a model city for education reform, as widely seen as a failure. Journalist Del Rusikoff told Business Insider. All right, so was it really a failure? Right? I mean, come on, guys, that's what government does best, right? Uh, they're, Considering as a failure, what, what were you to expect? You know, what were, where was the measure of success in the past of these public school managers and actually producing good results? Uh, it's just, you're just throwing it into a sinkhole. Uh, they, there's no good performance reviews there. What do you think was going to happen with that money? Yeah. Right? Well, that's, that's kind of the, uh, that's the mentality that, uh, that you have, especially on the left wing, but really on the right wing too. Uh, if, you, if you want something done, you throw money at it and it'll magically get done because, you know, Magic. Right. And then they'll say, the reason why it's not getting done is because you haven't been throwing enough money at it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is exactly, well, that, that's exactly what uh, what this was. Right. You know, he, Zuckerberg didn't think they were getting enough funding, so he increased it. And look what happened. Of course, you know, of course it didn't work. Right. $200 million. $200 million. Cost in the drain. Yeah. Uh, the only ones that worked apparently was for charity schools, or I guess voucher schools. A small time percentage that the money went to that. But for everything else that was on the public domain failed miserably. Uh, like one of the things he was trying to fight really hard for with this money was to kick out the piss poor teachers, right? The teachers who have been there through seniority is difficult to fire because, uh, hey, um, you know, the contract term state otherwise, we're unionized, you can't fire us. It's, uh, you have to go through hell and high waters to, in order to get rid of a, a piss poor teacher. Yeah. And so if he wanted to reward uh, good performance teachers based on their merits, based on their deeds um, and performance, but of course, the negotiations and through this made sure again that none of that stuff would change. That seniority trumps uh, everyone else. Well, it's it's uh, it, you know New, New Jersey is um, you know across the river from New York, so I don't I don't know if they have uh, similar policies, but I know in New York City, it's virtually impossible to fire a teacher, even if they're proven to be like pedophiles. Mm -hmm. And what, what you end up is this situation where you're, where the New York City school system is paying pedophiles to sit in a room because they know they can't have them with, with the kids, but they can't fire them either because the, the paperwork to fire a teacher uh. has to go, is just enormous, plus it has to go through all of these channels and generally it doesn't even work. Mm. So you end up with teachers being paid, you know, quote unquote teachers being paid to do nothing because you know, they like to fondle children. It's despicable. Revolting. Yeah. Um, revolting. I mean, I, I remember hearing like there's a high percentage of like 90% of the students who graduated from high school, you still can't read. Yeah. Right? High uh, illiteracy read there. Uh, fucking ridiculous. Uh, $20 million went to consultants. $20 million went to consultants, people who can kind of just up their number because uh, there's no price market there to compare in these particular public schools uh, monopolize the indoctrination system. So yeah, so they can, they can name any number. Well, the government's going to, have to pay for it. You know, well, they're in charge of the money that Zuckerberg <laughs> foolishly gave to them. And uh, they're making make like $1,000 a day just giving uh, stupid opinions that still lead to this kind of failure. Um, and of course, it says here that local teachers and administrators did not see any of the additional funds and merit pay that they were promised. So was it a failure? Uh, yes and no. 
Uh, yes, for the intentions of what Mark Berg, uh, Zuckerberg wanted, but you know, what, what do you think was going to happen? He gave it to government. <laughs> Ask people you want to give your money to. It was, a, it was a failure for the Zuck. It was a huge success for the government busybodies. Right, yeah. <laughs> At least they succeeded there, right? Yeah. Um, doing what they do best. Uh, amount to failures and failures and failures. Reminds me of that meme that says communism is the definition of failure. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you have here? So that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's horrible. That is a lot of wasted money and, and value that could have been better spent elsewhere. The unseen, you know, yeah. right, so to speak. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's what government does best. All right. All right, so up next, Elon Musk's SpaceX returns to flight and pulls off dramatic historic landing. Elon Musk's SpaceX successfully landed the first stage of its Falcon 9 rocket in its landing pad here Monday evening in its first flight since its rocket exploded six months ago. Now this is in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The historic landing, the first time a rocket launched a payload into orbit and then returned safely to Earth, was cheered as a sign that SpaceX, the darling of the commercial space industry, has its momentum back. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So, so this launch is vindication for Elon Musk and SpaceX for the launch that uh, happened in uh, June. They they attempt to do this before. Right. And what happened is when they when they tried it, it uh, I, I don't I believe that it's when they when they tried to land it, it ended up failing and the entire rocket exploded, mm -hmm. and people were just lambasting them. Saying, see, private space, you know, um, exploration will not work, blah, 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 blah. This is, you're being dangerous and, and everything. And they were just, every, you know, everybody was just coming down on him. Ignoring the fact that, you know, Apollo 1 exploded on the launch, launch pad and, and, you know, things like that. Right. And, um... Hey, at least it was, at that point, it was on his dime, right? Right, right, yeah. So for the well, most of it. Well, the later on, the subsequent con contracts I'm going to mention. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so there is there is a little bit um, of a caveat here. Uh, SpaceX, you know, th this was a NASA subcontract that, that they're doing, and they are getting a, de a decent amount of funding from NASA. So this isn't completely entirely privately funded. Right. But uh, it is at the very least a private venture, and none and it nonetheless, you know, it's. It's a huge step forward for commercial space travel. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to you know a tourist flight out of uh, out of the atmosphere in my future. So, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, doing a lot of these sort of sorts of projects is what will lower the costs to make it more affordable for everyone uh, to do that. Uh, NASA experienced a lot of budget cuts and. Uh, yeah, you mentioned like the space shuttle exploding, but yeah, you look at the design of the space shuttle it has never really changed substantially. This has remained the same and the same. Right. Uh, whereas in the market, new products come out the next year because there's market competition. And when you don't have any of that competition, there's, you know, you get lazy, you get relaxed. And eventually the inspections of doing, of inspecting these space shuttles uh, miss a calculation error in one of the rubber sealments that goes into this uh, space shuttle and the thing kind of broke off and shattered. And that's why uh, I think Sally Ride died on that uh, right. the horrible takeoff. And so that's uh, what you have <laughs> with government monopolized agencies. Um, people talk about NASA and all this stuff. But yeah, in the beginning, there was no NASA until they grabbed all the, the brightest and brilliant people in the very beginning. Yeah, you can do a lot of cool stuff in the beginning, but then the long-term consequences is space shuttles blowing up. Yeah. Um, and nothing new of novelty arising from there. And, and specifically addressing that novelty, this entire idea of landing a um a rocket is is new mm -hmm. nasa never either either they That's couldn't sure. or they never thought of doing it and this is actually uh i believe specifically elon musk's idea he might he might just be taking somebody else's idea and putting money behind it but uh but of course the point is you know this isn't something that nasa came up with and elon musk is the the whole his whole um his whole reason for doing this in large part, is to go to Mars. Hmm. Because the way he puts it, if you want to go to Mars, you have to be able to land a rocket. Because they don't, you know, there are no runways or anything. So right. you can't take a shuttle or anything like that. So you have to be able to land a rocket. Also, if you want to come back, you have to have a rocket right. to escape <laughs> again. So It also, he mentions that it's, it will be cheaper if you have a rocket sent off into space and come back to land again. Right. right? 
instead of uh, you know chucking off into the ocean <laughs> as NASA tends to do with all this stuff. And of course, NASA has no uh, incentive for novelty because the money's stolen already, and they don't have to take care of it and recycle or reuse it, right? Um, yeah, that's, well, that's the that's the whole reason why SpaceX is getting the subcontracts in the first place, right? Because they operate cheaper than NASA did, right? And NASA had uh, their funding cut. So they couldn't keep doing it themselves. That's why that's why they're going to the Russians and going to private industry. So. Right. What does that other meme say? Red Bull has a better space program than NASA. <laughs> <laughs> Inevitably, they they will. Uh, people like Virgin Galactic and all these uh, billionaires out there. It's, those are the people who are going to put the real space venture stuff out there. Not, that's the one I'm looking forward to. Yeah. <laughs> Not a government. Well, we have a new question from the audience concerning human rights versus animal rights. Dun, dun, dun. Do animals besides humans have rights? Why? What exactly is the uniquely human quality that gives only humans rights? If the qualifier has to do with intelligence, what about the mentally handicapped rights? Why can we kill dolphins but not retards? It's an interesting question. Um, it's definitely something that I've thought a lot about in my own life. Um, and I what, think, we, we can only kill dolphins in our cars? <laughs> why? Why is it? <laughs> only that part. Only that question only. Fixated. <laughs> um, and I think ultimately, though, this comes down to you finding a community who shares your beliefs regarding this sort of thing. Um, well, to a certain extent, I agree with that. I mean, it's so if this is really a moral issue, then you do need to apply it universally. However, you know, we we can only affect change in our own community. We we can only right. affect you know the behavior, um, it, you know, the moral behavior with those people that that we can surround ourselves with, and and even the just really egregious things like murder. And, and theft and things like that, you cannot control what happens outside your community anyway. So to a, to a certain extent, that that is a little bit moot, um, which takes this into sort of a, a, a more ethereal realm or, or a philosophical, you know, logical realm. So does the does logical morality that applies to humans still apply to animals? Right. Uh, I think the moral question is a very good one. I guess just to answer the first one really quickly is that uh, there, there's no such thing as rights, right? Let's just knock that out of the ballpark here. Right. No, no such thing as rights. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah the, old, the entire thing is framed in, in, in the context of rights. And, and right. we do need to recognize that, that the, the, con, um, the concept of rights is a convenient categorization, but rights don't exist. Um, it's, rights are sort of a... a a red herring left over from from the constitutionalist, you know, mind frame. Right. right. So, I'm going to say a right is uh, a, any moral action you take. So we don't have rights, but we have the right to do whatever it is we want to do with our autonomy. Um, so that's uh, an argument you'll hear often is the moral agency argument. Um, humans are able to exercise moral agency, whereas animals aren't able to. Um, but I think it would set a dangerous precedent for us to think that animals um, have uh, the right to not be aggressed. Would you say that you have the right to not be aggressed upon? Uh, right now, I would, I would, I would uh, remove rights from a vocabulary. Right. It's more of an uh, <laughs> uh, obligation, <laughs> duty, right? I have an duty. obligation to respect uh, your claim of your self-ownership your claim of your ownership of your property, right? The title said to claim over. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a duty to respect that, right? And as so much I would uh, see if you would grant me the same courtesy. <laughs> right? Can you reject my definition of rights being right action? A right action? Uh, I guess in terms of right action, I guess I could see it like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess like when rights are used often, it's kind of play like you're mentioning with like constitutional rights or like housing rights. When people mention that, which means like right or right to water. Well, the, well, the uh, concept of rights, the the way that is it, it is put forth, you know, God given rights uh, for this. And negative that. rights, I think it's right. So, so it becomes an issue of well, the diff the difference between negative and positive rights. But rights as as a concept to begin with really lends itself to that com that conflation. Right. So it, even saying agreement, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so like the more agency, I think, is an interesting part uh, in that 
those are applicable to people who have the capacity to make those moral choices. And so which would exclude uh, animals or anything, really, uh, until they can kind of exhibit that. That doesn't mean that all of a sudden we can uh, kill retards and not dolphins, or vice versa, uh, in the way that it's just described here. Uh, it, I mean, people who are uh, not of a good mindset or do not grow up properly will still have caregivers. <laughs> will, they will still be under the charge of guardians. And so that be that will be their responsibility that they've uh, taken over to to raise and take care of, right? So that, that would be not none of your concern. It wouldn't be a problem of yours to contend with. Um, it would not be a problem at all, I guess, in, in, in that way. They'll just have their own community and you know coming back and forth and taken care of. And somebody who advocates in their stead of and taking you know uh, the blame if they were to do something to someone, right? I'll pay for the damages, right? As sometimes you do with small children, and. But of course, that brings up the question, I guess, like, well, what about uh, babies, right? We're talking about, well, what about babies having more agency? There's still a lot of, a lot of science that still needs to be done in that. Uh, so far, they've shown uh, as young as, like, two years old, several months old, having, showing some interesting capacity for more agency. Uh, but what about those, you know, a few months younger, just coming straight out of the womb? Uh, I think I would defer then to just the community rules you would have. Right, the community rules that says here in this community we have peaceful parenting, no hitting of any human being, regardless of how tall or small, uh, and uh, no hurting animals. <laughs> we get it that that's your dog, right? But part of the community rules here is that there's no uh, animal abuse, no hitting dogs, right? You don't hit kids. And most people, it's backwards here in the United States, but like people wouldn't raise like price winning dogs and they'll never hit them or hurt them. But I'll chop off your penis if you're a boy and, and you know, brutalize you and spank you and hit you if you uh, disobey. Uh, so, yeah, you can have those community rules that could be in person and, and maybe inevitably that'd be universally kind of pushed out forward from there. Right. Yeah, I have, um, uh, I think there are actually two, two good ways to look at this. So, first of all, I am just flat out, I'll say it right now, I admit I am a speciesist. And I'm okay with that. I'm a species too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but another another way to, to that I think is valuable to look at this is sort of the objectivist framework. Mm -hmm. So I'm not I'm not a fan of objectivism, um, but there are some uh, some there's some logic to the value there. So or I'm sorry, value to the logic there. So if you look at it from an objectivist framework, it's it's like, you know, how do you have a, or how do you approach this with with self value or self um, uh, sustainability or whatever you know selfishness and you don't want to live in a community where human life is not valued but you do want to live in a community in which you know human well one human life is valued and also human uh, sustainability you know sustainable lifestyles are valued and to a certain extent, meat is very, you know, it, it is a big part of that. Meat is, is a very, uh, a, I wouldn't say essential, but a very positive part of a sustainable diet to keep the, to keep longevity, to keep your, you know, yourself healthy and fit. So, yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Um, I guess I'm congrats on that. I'd rather get all my vitamins and all that naturally and, you know, I think uh, today people eat too much meat versus vegetables, but there's a reason why meat is heavily subsidized by the government to allow the cost to go exorbitantly low. And good food costs a lot because of the regulations and making sure everything's in place and they have to offset those costs on the prices to reflect that. Uh, this is the problem that Joe Salatin has in Polyface Farms. Uh, the FDA, USDA just come in there and just uh, is trying to ruin everything all the time and putting a lot more costs that are onto him and so good food costs a lot because of that. Uh, go figure, you know, the, the lobbyists of these uh, Monsanto uh, company uh, go out there and try to prevent small farms from having good stuff out there. It's a threat. This is probably a slippery slope, but uh, if you've ever looked at any vegan websites, you'll see a lot of people advocating for harming humans who have killed animals for food or, and that sort of thing. So I think that would be... Um, it's a slippery slope, but uh, it's a precedent you're setting when you're talking about giving animals rights, going to war against humans. <laughs> right, yeah, because now you're saying, well, now you just murder that animal, exactly. right? Uh, and that's not what I see in the jungle, what's going on. There's no, there's no mass murder going on there. It's just, it's just killing. It's just, yeah, when you when you look at the vegan framework, it, it really does have an, a, a 
serious inconsistency there. Right. Because, it, like, the people who got all up in arms about, you know, that guy who killed that one lion, you know, how many how many animals has, has that lion killed, you know? Well, I guess for them it would be murdered. Right. <laughs> murdered. Yeah. But no, the, I'm a murderer? the lion's not a human, so it can't murder, but you right. can murder the lion. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, if then I, you, you got to go on those dongos with your torches and capture all these murderers then. Right. right? It's yeah. your obligation now. Yeah. Get all those dolphins that gang rape all those female dolphins. It happens a lot. Uh, rapists out there in the sea. Be careful. You got to lock them up in cages. Read them their rights. Mm-hmm. I don't see anyone doing that. Uh, that just throws like the whole world into a crazy uh, <laughs> circus to have that kind of mindset. And then where do you draw the line from there? You know, what about insects? They, they exhibit a lot of similar characteristics as uh, animals, and people tend to anthropomorphize these characteristics, and well, which I think is down to, to that. I mean, where is the line? Because we all eventually come from the same place, you know? And yes, there's a huge, there's a huge branching between animals and humans, but even that eventually consolidates in, you know, in evolutionary history. So, you know, if you want to, if you want to, to go that way with animals, there has to be a cutoff. And how do you, you know, how do you just judge where that cutoff is? Right. Mm-hmm. So three ways: um, being a speciesist, right? Mm-hmm. So you're humans above all, human, man, no ape kind, uh, <laughs> no Planet of the Apes. I remember when I first watched it; it just angered me. Uh, I was like, stop. <laughs> uh, the second would be uh, more agency. That would be, but that comes. That's tricky. The task to show who has more agency is not really well defined. Uh, that's something that a lot of these different communities are going to have to kind of figure out, right? There's still an unknown branch of uh, exploration and knowledge to be to figure out from that. Mm. So this is no necessarily a philosophical argument, but um, I think the issue around this um, has to do with respect. Uh, we need to gain respect for animals, respect for plants, like you were saying, respect for insects. I don't go out and spray a lot of pe- pesticides um, to kill insects, not only to, because of um, their life, but because we live in an ecosystem and we need to take care of um, the entire functioning of the ecosystem. Um, are you, cockroaches so we, we part of the we ecosystem? Can't legislate, we can't legislate um, our relationship to nature. Right, 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 right. That's no, I, I agree. Yeah, well, there is, I mean, that that has to be given. I mean, first right. first and foremost. <laughs> but but also, I mean, it's there is a difference between, uh, between killing animals because, you know, of, either they'll kill you or they'll hurt you. Or you, or you just want food, or, or something like this, and enjoying the the act of harming of, of an animal, like torturing uh, dogs, or, or putting putting animals through through cage, you know cage fights and stuff like that. You know, there is a difference, at least to me, between those. And and for me, that because it becomes an aspect of not necessarily morality, but do you want to associate with this person? Who who does this type of behavior? Right? right, and for me, absolutely not. I would never trust somebody who actively enjoys harming animals because that's a pretty proven aspect of psych, you know, psychopathy. So I wouldn't trust that guy to have my back right. or yeah, to turn yeah. my back on. You know, so. No, I agree, uh, and I guess at that point we're kind of contending with the effects of uh, child abuse, for example, right? So. Right. Uh, you want to nip the bud and uh, instead of, you know, do preventative stuff and through peaceful parenting, you won't have all these, you know, people, you know, murdering animals as a kid growing up and getting involved in all these uh, types of dog fights and harm to other animals. Um, and it's easily they would have no problem committing harm to you. Right. So, yeah, peaceful parenting, <laughs> treating uh, the human be- the child as a, you know, with that dignity and respect as you would another human being that's uh, taller uh, will prevent that kind of a uh, barbarity, that kind of sadistic behavior and tendencies. Um, and then eventually along the way, the person who still wants to do the dog fighting will realize that, you know, if I want to survive in this new world, I'm going to have to let that go. <laughs> Otherwise, everyone's going to ostracize me, right? Especially economically. And so it's a different way to kind of change their behavior. Right? You don't have to be part of civilization. Civilization belongs to the civilized. If you want to be part of that, there's some kind of <laughs> norms you need to accept. Uh, I think that that goes a long way and having a community that then that has real respect for uh, for each other for for peaceful society and I think from there 
uh, it'll extrapolate towards how we treat uh, animals, right, and how we treat the environment. Right? Let's end the violence first that we do to each other. And, uh, and that violence is only children, and from there it will reflect to the rest of the world. Hmm. So, viewer, to sum up the answer to this question, no one has rights. <laughs> <laughs> and nuke the dolphins. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, please submit to the show here. Uh, we would love to answer them. Uh, these are a lot of fun. And of course, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this episode. Uh, we'll be uh, putting them out pretty much. We're going to try to do them every day, Monday to Friday. And that's the goal. But we can't do that without your help. So if you have any articles you'd like for us to cover, any topics, suggestions, or questions, um, send it our way. Go to um, email info at liberatervacom So with that, I'm Cal Maloney. Isaac Markison. I'm Phil, an artistician. See you guys at the Virtue Party. Take good care. Yeah.